In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, monks, nuns, and our beloved congregation, both those who are with us here in this Holy Church and those who are watching us through live streaming, May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one in nature and one in essence, bless you, guide you, protect you, and deliver you from the snares of the enemy, whether it be visible or invisible. In the name of the one and only Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. So how are we? Did you hear this angelic voice? He is my sweetheart. I love you, Charvelli. Man, I love you. You love me? <laughs> For those who are watching us through live streaming, especially, I just said to this angel, Charvel, I said, do you love me? He replied with, wa'a wa'a dov dov, wa'a wa'a dov dov. So it looks like you are a very brilliant disciple and a great student. You pick up these wonderful verses very quickly. Out of all the beautiful verses, the only verse from the Bible he picked was wa -a -wa -a -dov -dov. And you find that in the gospel of don't get me into trouble. <laughs> verse 1 chapter 1. All right, I pray that you're always in good health and in good spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Um, <clears throat> the gospel of today is according to St. Luke, um, and it is chapter 6, verses 6 to 46, uh, sorry, verses 12 to 46 inclusive. So it is Luke chapter 6, verses 12 to 46 inclusive. The Lord, in these verses, we don't have the time to go through them all one by one, but in these verses, the Lord is giving us great lessons. Great lessons for our spiritual life, for our, um, for our Christian life, and also it's a great lesson to, to learn from and to enable us to walk in the Lord's path. To understand these verses, example what the gospel is saying today. The Lord Jesus is saying, blessed are you poor, for you will, uh, for, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Um, blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who cry now, for you will laugh in the end. Blessed are you when you are persecuted, ridiculed for my name's sake. For re be happy and rejoice, for your reward is great in heaven. And then he goes on, I say to you, forgive, bless your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Be good to those who are against you. And then he goes and says, be merciful. Be like your heavenly father. All these lessons. Blessed are you that you're poor. I say to you, forgive your, pray for your enemy. Bless those who are against you. Forgive, have mercy, be merciful, be kind, do this do that, build your house on the rock, do all these wonderful things. Now, how can I, Lord, remain poor? How can I, Lord, be always hungry? How can I, Lord, be always crying, mourning? How can I, Lord, be able to withstand the persecutions and all the things that are coming like a tidal wave against me. 
how can I remain in, in total faithfulness to you? How can I, Lord, to be able to forgive those who have really hurt me? You said, bless your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you, who are against you. How can I forgive those who have hurt me? How can I be merciful? How can I do all these things, Lord? Show me, tell me, teach me, Lord. The beginning of chapter 6, the very same chapter of today, the beginning of it, the Lord gives us the key to use to unlock the door and enter through this narrow door. What is the beginning of chapter 6? It was Sabbath. The Lord was walking with his disciples, the twelve, and they went through the grain fields. The disciples were hungry, so they started plugging those grains and then rubbing them with their fingers and eating those grains. The scribes and the Pharisees saw what the disciples of the Lord did on a Sabbath. Until today, you go to Israel, when Sabbath comes and Sabbath begins, Friday 6 p.m. and Saturday 6 p.m. When Sabbath comes till now, Jewish people, with all love and respect to them, of course, but our beloved Jewish people, they stop working. If you are in a hotel, they will have special lifts for them where they open automatically and stop at every level lest they press a button of a lift. To that degree, they adhere to Sabbath. Literal. Very literal. So they were walking through the grain fields. They started plugging those grains, rubbing them with their, with their fingers and then eating them. The Pharisees and the scribes ran to the Lord Jesus. They said, what kind of a teacher are you? You should really teach them well. Don't they realize today is Sabbath and you don't work on a Sabbath and if you do, you are in breach of the law of God, the commandment of God. The God said, sanctify this day for me and come and worship me on this day. You should be worshiping the Lord, not working out there in the field. The Lord is always brilliant. He said, you guys have read the Holy Bible, the scriptures of the Old Testament. You should know. Haven't you heard what David, King David did? Him and those who were with him. He entered the temple of God and he took the bread, or what they call it the showbread, or the bread of faces. The showbread, he took it, he ate from it, and he gave some of it to those who were with him. Yet, this bread only priests can eat of. He had no jurisdiction, no right, even though being a king. But he had no right to do that. Why don't you go and say to David, you broke Sabbath, naughty boy. <laughs> naughty king. <laughs> Why are you picking on me? But don't you know, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. And then on another Sabbath, the Lord enters a synagogue. And then he sees a man whose right hand was withered. Now the scribes and the Pharisees again, with, this, with their MRI, MRI um, scanner, they're checking the Lord. They're scanning him, waiting for Jesus to make a mistake, to jump at him like a vicious lion. The Lord knows the heart, the thought of men. He knew what they were thinking. <laughs> so deliberately, he calls that man with the withered hand. He brings him in the center of the synagogue. And then he turns to all of those scribes and Pharisees thinking so evil. 
in their hearts and their minds and he says to them let I ask you this what do you do on a Sabbath would you do good or evil on a Sabbath would you save a life or destroy one on a Sabbath which one geniuses do you do good or evil do you save a life or destroy it on a Sabbath and he looked at all of them with no answer no reply what would you reply to such a powerful statement and then he says to that man with the right hand being withered he says stretch it out and it's fully recovered then our chapter begins How can I be poor? How do I come to this realization? How can I forgive those who are against me? How can I be merciful to someone who is not worthy of it? How can I do all these things, Lord? He says, number one, you need to walk through the grain field. Now the grains, this is the wheat field. This wheat this grain of wheat represents the Lord Jesus for he is that grain of wheat and the Lord said unless a, a, a grain of wheat falls onto the ground and is buried it can never bring fruits and he was talking about himself I am that grain of wheat that was buried in the tomb and I rose from the dead on the third day. This one grain brought millions and millions and millions of fruits called Christians. And what do you make out of the grain of wheat? Bread. I am the living bread that descended from heaven. He who eats me lives in me forever. And who is Christ? the word the logos in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god why is there someone we are all human beings we are all christians why is there some christians walk in the light Yet there are other Christians walk in darkness. But they're all Christians, all baptized. All have received the Lord Jesus in the sacrament of baptism. All have come to church at some stage in their life and received the body and the blood of Christ. Yet some walk in the light, some walk in darkness, and all are Christians. The decisive thing that determines whether you walk in the light of Christ or in the, in the darkness of Satan is the word of Christ. It is the word. That grain of wheat is the word. It is Christ and Christ is the word. This is the word. When they were rubbing that grain because there is a little skin covering the heart of this, of this grain. So they rubbed off the skin of that heart in order to eat it pure rubbing the skin meaning the Lord is saying when you receive my word when you hear my word when it is sent to you I don't want you to stop at the surface level which is the skin I don't want you to remain at the surface level because if you remain at the surface level you will end up a literal person you're gonna take my word literally a literal person becomes religious I don't like the word which is referred to clergymen as religious people I don't like it a religious person is a very narrow-minded literal person takes the word literally not spiritually so the Lord says when you come 
to receive when you eat the grain, when you come and eat my word, when you receive my word, I want you to take the skin off, remove the literal sense in order to be able to dive into the depth of the spiritual sense of my word. For my word is spirit, not literal. Don't remain at the physical level, meaning you interpret my word your way, not God's. You are using your intellect to understand and fathom my word. Therefore, you fall short of the glory of God because the only way to comprehend, to understand what the word is saying, you need to approach it in the spiritual sense. You need to let God to reveal it to you, no one else, since this word is of God and it is God himself then it takes God to explain it. No one can explain the infinite God except the infinite God himself. Don't stop at the surface level, rub it off. When you, when you come with the intention with the heart of seeking the Lord and the Lord only, the Lord will give you that grace to, to rub off that skin and receive the pure heart wholeheartedly. When you remove the skin, there is the heart. When you take that heart into you, that heart becomes you. When that heart who is Christ Jesus becomes you, the first thing the Lord will revive in you is your withered right hand. Look how the Holy Spirit is inspiring St. Luke to write. Yet St. Luke at the time had no idea what he was writing. Why is the Holy Spirit going through the trouble of mentioning the Lord entering synagogue on a Sabbath and then he heals a man whose right hand was dry, dead. Because the Lord is sending you a spiritual message for your well-nourishment, for your survival, for your revival. The right hand represents the spirit. The left hand represents the body. This body Without the spirit, it is dead, it is dark. It is the spirit of God that enlightens this body and gives it beauty. Spirit, like the sun and the moon. The sun is that spirit, the moon is the body. What would you do with the moon without a sun? There is no way you can see it there is no way you can, you can look at it and say, wow, look at this, look at the moon, how beautiful it looks in this dark night. But the beauty of that moon is the reflection of the sun's beam on it. The Lord says, when you accept me from the heart, when you seek me from the heart, when you search for me from the heart, the first thing when I enter your life, I will fix your right hand, meaning I'll give life back to the spirit which you have killed inside of you with your worldly lifestyle that you had before. Before I called you, you lived in the world. You were that prodigal son living in that pig's field. You enjoyed the lust, the pleasures, and the treasures of the world. Everything you did, everything you said, everything about you was worldly. Skin, physical level, literal level. He says, as long as you were living at that surface level, you were dead. You need to dive into the spirit enter into the depths of my word. Don't stop 
at the surface level. When I enter into your life, I'll give life back to your spirit. Because unless I revive your spirit, your body can't do anything for you. So many people became so famous in this world, so rich in this world, so powerful in this world, but they are absolutely dead from within. No meaning to life, no purpose in life, no morals, no values, no destiny, no origin, nothing. Nothing, my beloved. Nothing. The Lord says, don't be literal, but enter the spiritual level. The Lord, another, another part says, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Some people misunderstand what the Lord is really saying here. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But hang on a sec. The letter, when you put a combination of letters, what do you end up with? Word. Who is this word? Christ. So isn't the letter the, uh, the, the beginning to this word? Yes. Why are you saying the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life? The Lord is saying, when you read my word, which is made out of letters, if you misinterpret, misunderstand the letter, the letter will come back and kill you. Because my word, when it is received the right way, it gives life. When it is rejected, the word judges and gives you eternal death. It is the word that decides whether you be in the light or in the dark. You understand the word, receive the word in the right way, the word will give you life, will give you light. But if you take my word and misinterpret it, misunderstand it, and explain it wrongly, like so many people do nowadays, they explain it so wrongly, they are giving death to people, not life. They are giving darkness to people, not enlightenment. The Word of God must be given as the Lord wants it. Not my way, not your way, God's way. Who is a literal person? A literal person is the person that lives with the Lord through duties and obligations. Some Christians will say, I go to church because like I'm, obli I'm obligated to do that. Because if I don't go to church, my mom will come and whinge, my dad will come and whinge, my husband, my wife, Everyone at home is going to say, oh, well, you haven't been to church, you naughty boy, you naughty girl. Go to church, go to church. So just to keep them at bay, I go to church to keep everyone happy. Some people go to church because, oh, you know, there is, there is a wedding this Saturday. I have to go to church because if I don't go to church, then I won't be able to face those people who invited me to the wedding of their daughter or their son. It's a very embarrassing thing for me not to attend this wedding. So I went to church just to please people. Literal. I went to church because there was a feast of this saint and that saint. And I had to because this saint is very dear to my heart. So I went for the sake of the saint, not the honor of the saint, not the Lord of the saint. Who is the saint without Christ? Nothing. Who made that person a saint? Christ. We go to church, we go to Christ 
for every reason but love. Love. L-O-V-E. By the way, is it hot? It's hot, eh? Can we... Um... It is hot, eh? My beloveds, the word of Christ gives you life. What is life? Light. L-I-G-H-T. Light. When you walk in the light, everything is clean. You don't need to think too hard to figure things out. You don't need to find the way because the way is already extremely clear right before your very eyes. The light, everything becomes clear in the open, apparent. Nothing is in hiding when the light comes. The Lord says to all of us, you want to be able to forgive your enemy. You want to be able to have mercy on those who don't deserve it. You want to be able to withstand all the persecutions for my name's sake. And then rejoice and be glad that you have been kicked, punched, ridiculed, spat on and thrown out in the street. And you want to be able, after all this being done to you, you still keep and maintain happiness and joy. You want to be able to do that, my child? Rub the skin off my word, the grain, and dive deep. If you remain at the surface of the ocean, all you're going to get is salty water. Good for nothing. You can't drink it. You can't bath yourself with it because it will eat your skin away if you stay in that salty water for too long and if you drink it the more you drink it the more thirsty you become you want to discover the riches of the ocean dive deep in the deep you will find pearls and precious stones the treasures are in the depth but one thing when you're diving deep you're alone you can scream as much as you want, as loud as you want. No one will hear you. In the deep, there is pressure. The pressure changes. In the deep, there is some very dangerous creatures that can come and devour you. The great white shark brother. Go, Ozzy. The great white shark, when, when it sees you, is not going to come and say, Hello, how are you? Would you like a tickle? No. He will make you <laughs> one bite gone. There is a lot of danger. There is a lot of loneliness. There is a lot of pressure. That's why not everyone is able to dive deep. You know why? Not all Christians are able to dive deep. One reason. I remained at the surface. What is the surface? The body. I didn't go into the depth of the spirit. The body says, Lord, you know I love you. I love you. I was going to come this Sunday, but I was so tired. We had a wedding on Saturday and the wedding didn't finish till one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. By the time I got home, it was four. By the time I slept, it was six. They came and woke, woke me up at eight. I only slept two hours, go to church. I can't, the body is tired. Lord, I wanna follow you, but you know what? I've got this idea in my head. I just wanna do it. I've got this business in my head. I just wanna do it. And the hope that I can be successful. When I'm successful, I'll be better for you, Lord. 
Lord, I want to I wanna come to your house, but you know what, Lord? So-and-so came to visit us, so I couldn't make it. And then I remembered I had to go and visit my uncle, my auntie, my friend, my cousin, my, I don't know what, the whole tribe. Lord, I wanted to come, but you know what? Let me just finish this issue that I have. The moment I finish with this problem, with this issue, you will see me at the front row every Sunday. You will never come. That day will never come because you can never fix your problems unless Jesus fixes it for you. You cannot find Christ by coming to the church for the sake of this and for the sake of that. The only time you will find the Lord, truly you will have a true encounter with Him, when you come wholeheartedly seeking Him only. Lord, I walked into your church. I see nothing. I hear nothing. I know nothing. I came for you. I came for you, Lord. Live in the spirit, not the flesh. What's it to you? What others are saying and doing? What's that to you? It's none of your business. What's it to you? Who is at the front? Who is at the back? And who is on either side of you? What's it to you? None of your business. You're sitting in the church and maybe in the church there is a hundred thousand people. You need to sit in the church as if the church only has you. No one else. Then, then you will find the Lord. You know why? Because this word, it is Him. And this word gives you the knowledge of Him. This word gives you the revelation of Him. This word gives you the insight of him. When you receive this word, this word will lead you to him. And when this word leads you to him, you, through this word, you will begin to love him. You will begin to love him. When love kicks in, it's honeymoon time. In the Greek language, for love, there is four different words for love. In English, it is all love. I love my, my wife, my husband, my father, my mother, my brother, my sister, my dog, my plant, my rock, my bicycle. I love them all. It's one word. But in Greek, no. There is agape, love, which is to do with the divine. This is divine love, agape. There is Phileo, which is brotherly or friendship, friendship love, brotherly love. There is storge, which is protective parental love. And there is the last one, eros, intimate love, honeymoon baby, matrimonial love. All the last three, phileo, friendship love storge protective parental love eros intimate love all these three are only made po possible when they are all hanging on the first one agape divine love without god the other three can't stand and god is spirit i need to dive into his spirit through his word Remove the skin of that grain. Don't be literal. Dive into the spirit. When you are in that intimate love, Eros, no matter how much you love your mom, your dad, who is that person that you love the most? If they come and say to you, can I come with you on your honeymoon? You will chop them. You will shred them. 
Honeymoon is for me and my bride. Anyone, no matter how much you love them, you will never let allow anyone to come with you on your honeymoon because it's a, an intimate moment with the love of my life. No one interferes with this moment. Christ is your heavenly groom and the church is betrothed to him. The church is his bride and love is jealous. Love is jealous. The Lord wants you for him and him only. His, his love is jealous, but it's a holy jealousy. It's a zealous, jealous love. Holy, not like us. We get jealous for nonsense things. No, everything is perfect with the Lord. Everything is balanced. However, since he is your love, then he is jealous for his bride. If he sees the bride is being shared with someone else, he goes crazy. He starts breaking things in order to make them. You walk away from him, he'll break you. You are his bride. Love is jealous. You can't share. No one shares my bride. No one. Satan, I crushed your head on Calvary for the sake of my bride. Because I love her. With all of my being, I love her. Business takes you away from the Lord, he'll bankrupt that business. Health takes you away from the Lord, he'll bring sickness. People take you away from the Lord, he will take them away from you. Don't ever love anyone or anything more than the Lord because it will be taken away from you. Everything has to be through the Lord. Because at the end, everything will fade away except this love of my life, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, next time you want to go to church, say along with King David, I was glad when they said to me, we are going to the house of the Lord. Or to the house of the Lord, we shall go. That is in Aramaic. I was glad. I was glad not huffing and puffing and saying, oh, not again, church. They came in to wake me up and by, they, they forced me to wake up. They dragged me out of the house to go to, to church. When you are glad going to the church, you will wake up your parents, not the other way around. You will be awakened early morning, ready, dressed up like Sharbel, and come to church running. Man, Sharbel comes like psh, first class. Well done, my dear friend. Dove, 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 dove. Absolutely. You need, when it comes to love, who is your love? What is your love? If the Lord is your love, then you're coming all for Him. No one else, nothing else. You're coming because of Him. He is the reason for your existence. He is the reason for you being here. You love Him, that's why you come to see Him. That's why you come to meet Him. That's why you come to receive Him in the body and the blood, true body and blood of Christ. You come for the Lord and the Lord only. When you have this kind of an intention, this kind of discernment, this kind of understanding and enlightenment, it is impossible for the Lord not to reveal himself to you in whichever way he chooses, but he will. He will grant you what you are, what your heart is desiring he will grant it when it's to do with love true genuine love no hypocrisy no falsification no twisting when he sees you are genuinely seeking him he will reveal himself to you because he is the truth he will
Jesus is amazing. But to find the pearls, you need to dive. And that diving, there's a lot of pressure. There is loneliness sometimes. And there is a lot of danger as well. But the Lord is my shepherd. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, Lord. Your staff and your rod comfort me. You're with me. I'll leave you with this. Where's Elias? <laughs> um, One day, a group of young, young men, they came and said, um, Father, I want to ask you a question. I said, yes, go ahead. He said, is it, is it like true as Christians, I have to go to church, I have to pray? I said, no. Who told you this? They were shocked, but in a nice way. <laughs> I said, who told you you have to? He said, but that's what we hear when they preach. He said, no, they're wrong. I said, they're wrong. You don't have to. He said, really? I said, yeah. They couldn't believe it. I said, you don't have to. Who told you you have to go to church? You have to pray. You have to fast. No, relax. Whoa, Father, you're nice. I said, I know. <laughs> I said, but... Before you go, I'll ask you this question and be honest. I said, do you love the Lord Jesus? He said, yes. I said, well, if you truly love the Lord, then you have to go to church. And if you truly love the Lord, then you have to fast and you have to pray and you have to read the Holy Bible if you love Him. I said, therefore, going to church is the result of the love. Reading the Holy Bible is the result of your love for Christ. Praying is the result of that love. Fasting is the result. It is not the fasting that matters. It is the love that you showed Christ in that fasting. It is not going to church that matters. It is the love that was in your way from home to church all that way. And while you were sitting in the church, how much love was there? The Lord is love. God is love and God speaks the language of love only, not gibberish. No. God speaks the language of love and love is clarity. Everything is vividly clear because He is light. Nothing is hidden. And the light fears not darkness, which is Satan. I said, when you are going to church, when you are praying, when you are reading the Holy Bible, when you are fasting, this is the result of your love for the Lord. Therefore, when it comes to love, there is nothing called, I have to do it. No, but if you love the person, then you have to do it if you truly love him. I can't say to someone, I love you to death, but I will never listen to you. What kind of love is that? Or the husband comes to his wife. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'll put you in trouble. The husband comes to the wife and he says, I love you. You are my life. Remember that joke, my life? You are my life. You are my life. You are my life. You're everything. You're everything. But he gives her nothing but pain. What kind of love is this? Well, if you love me, show me. Give me an act of love. Show me. Reveal to me. So the Lord is saying to all of us, I am your heavenly groom. You are my church and the church is my bride. I want my bride for me on the basis of love, not duties and obligations. I had to go to church and I had to fast and I had to read the Bible and I had to do some charitable deeds. No, you don't have to. 
But if you love me, naturally you will come to church. Naturally you will pray. Naturally you will fast. Naturally you will remember those who are hungry, thirsty, naked, and left behind. Naturally you will. You will do it naturally. Because where there is true love, there is natural instinct. Why? Because through love, there is life. And I've always said this, and I'll sum it up with this, finish it off with this. When it comes to life, you don't think about it. You don't go and study about it in order to live life. You just live it. Because this breath that you take every day, that is your life. This breath is your life. Do you think before you breathe? No. Do you count how many times you, br you breathe in the day? No. You don't even pay attention to it. Why? Because naturally you breathe. Because this life was made possible because of God's love for you and me. And when it comes to love, it is natural. Natural, my beloved. This is the way the Lord wants us. The literal people, they, re, they have to look at the calendar when the great land begins and when the great land ends. The literal people, they have to remember, did I eat meat on Friday or not? Or Wednesday, oh, I forgot I ate meat on Friday and Wednesday. Sorry, Lord, I forgot. Listen, you don't walk with the Lord with a checklist. Like this monk, it was his first day in this monastery. It is a beginning to his monastic life. So he said to himself, I'm gonna, when I walk into the monastery, I'll find the one with the longest, whitest beard. I'll go and seek their counsel. So he walks in and he sees this old monk, white beard, one meter long. So he runs, he says, this guy is full of wisdom and experience. It goes to him, he says, Father, he says, yes, my child. He says, today is my first day in the monastic life. Please give me, can I ask you one thing? Um, when does the great Lent begin? The old monk looks at him. He says, honestly, son, I don't know when the great Lent begins because all I know is all my life is one big great Lent. When I'm fasting all my life, I don't need to think when it begins, when it ends. I don't have to worry. The reason why I turned my life into one great Lent, because I love the one who fasted for me, who prayed for me, who died and rose from the dead for me. That's why all my life is one big, great land. Come to church for the Lord. Amen. Is it still hot? It's hot, huh? Can we, can we put the aircon on cool a bit, please? Well, it's my presence anyway. You know, oh, that joke, you know, about uh, this husband calling his wife, my life, my life. Some of you maybe have not heard it. I'll say it again anyway. <laughs> so anyway, this guy, this husband, he used to call his wife, my life, my life. Everything was my life. My life, good morning. My life, how are you? My life, where are you? My life, let's go. My life, let's come. Anyway, one night they were asleep. The husband wakes up startled. He sensed there was something happening in the room. He wakes up and to a shocking surprise, this angel of God is in the room. And he makes the sign of the cross and he says, Kiria Leison, Lord have mercy. What's wrong, angel? What do you want? He said, I came to take your life. He said, here she is. <laughs> so husbands, be wise. And it's always good to call your wife my life because it could come handy one day when you need it the most. There you go. Now that's what you call true love. I'll sacrifice you, my darling, because you're my life. 
I will give you away, no problems. Okay, let's, let's, let's bow our heads now. Ask the Lord Jesus to have mercy on us. Forgive us. Make us worthy to come forth and receive him in the true body and blood of Christ the King. Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all, pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus forgive us all. May the Lord Jesus make us worthy to come and receive him in the true body and blood, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Uh, just a couple of announcements um, very quickly. Um, the Good Shepherd Youth Ministry uh, our monthly meeting will take place on Saturday, 1st of July, the very beginning of July, 1st of July at 12 noon. Last time and on Friday I said 10 a.m. I made a mistake. So actually it is Saturday, the 1st of July at 12 midday, 12 noon. It will be held here at the church. If you haven't heard about our youth ministry, if you'd like to enroll, Please see either Father Daniel or Father George and this evening. And also you can attend on the day of the meeting, which is Saturday, 1st of July at 12 noon, and enroll then as well. It is for those who are 18 plus, 18 years of age plus, this youth ministry is um, designed and tailored for those age brackets there, 18 plus. So please, I encourage you all to be part of this youth ministry because we will have a lot of activities um, that we uh, wish to achieve by the grace of our Lord Jesus. And there are projects in the, down the track in the very near future. All for spiritual nourishment, spiritual growth. Very vital. And also through our youth ministry, we do um, have scripture readings and also teachings on these holy scriptures so if you'd like to educate yourself more equip yourself with the word of god and put on the whole uh, armor of god as saint paul says it is very vital for us to attend such uh, meetings such gatherings and be part of our good shepherd youth ministry parents whose children are uh, going to the spiritual camp next month in July the, for the teenagers and those who have children in the Divine Heart Sunday School. So parents for both teenagers and Divine Heart Sunday School children that are attending or going uh, to the spiritual camp in July. We are holding a meeting for all parents this Tuesday coming the 27th of this month at 7 p.m. It is very vital for all parents to attend, to be informed of everything that is um, involved in this spiritual camp. So please, parents, do attend this, uh, this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, and the, it will be held in the church's hall. Uh, for the Divine Heart Sunday School children, if you haven't enrolled your children for this spiritual camp, tonight is the last night to enroll them. It is from the ages of 8 to 16. Tonight is the last night. It's closing tonight. The, um, the other thing is, 
um, saying this with all love and respect and humility. And I hope nobody misunderstands uh, me um, in any way, form, or shape. Uh, we are an apostolic church. Uh, we have our sacraments. The body and the blood is one of the seven sacraments of our beloved Holy Church. So for those who are non-Christian and are present here with us in the church, I am very happy to have you here with us. The church is the house of the Lord. It is open for everyone, Christians, non-Christians alike. However, to receive the body and the blood, you must be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And you also must come from an apostolic background, either Catholic or Orthodox, Orthodox in both Eastern and Oriental Orthodoxy. You are welcomed. If you're not baptized, you cannot receive the body and the blood until you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior. If you come from a Protestant background, and I'm saying again, with all love and respect, if you are coming from a Protestant background, we are very happy to have you in the church. This church is always open for everyone. However, my beloved friend in Christ, brother in Christ, you cannot receive the body and the blood of Christ if you come from a Protestant background because the way you believe this is not the true body, not the true blood. You only believe it is symbolic. It is bread and wine. It is only bread and wine for you. This is your faith. This is the way you perceive, you understand the Holy Bible. So since this is the way you believe, you cannot receive. Because I cannot give you the body and the blood if you are taking it as bread and wine. Unless you believe it is the true body the true body of Christ and the true blood of Christ, I cannot give you the holy sacrament of the body and the blood. And if you wish to discuss this any further, with absolute love and humility, we'll sit with you and we'll go through the scriptures and see what the Lord says about his body and blood. But if you come from an apostolic background, either Catholic, Orthodox, you are more than welcome to receive the Holy Eucharist because you believe this is the body and the blood of Christ. Without going into too much details. And I pray that you don't, you don't misunderstand me. My intention is, is just love, but I need to tell you what the church's belief is because um, I need to be straightforward and very open and clear and honest with you. But I'm saying it out of love and humility. We pray, my beloved, the Lord Jesus, for the Lord to unite His beloved church, the Holy Apostolic Universal Church. Whatever divisions happened in, in the past, whatever obstacles we are still encountering nowadays, we pray the Lord clears the way, removes every obstacle, every hindrance, touches the hearts of the church leaders, and bring every church leader into a very humble way in order to be able to bow our heads so that Christ's head is seen, no one else's. We pray for the unity of the church. We pray, my beloved. We pray. Christ is one. And he is the one who unites all of his children. We pray for that day. Lastly, my beloved, again, um, by the grace of our Lord Jesus, we are going on this uh, trip. It's like a, a small mission uh, to visit our beloved people in Turkey, Lebanon, and Syria. Um, especially of what happened in recent times with the earthquake that shook Turkey and also Syria. Until this day, as we speak, there are people really struggling beyond measures, very badly, very badly struggling. So by the grace of our Lord, we are going on this trip personally uh, sometime in August and visit uh, as many families, as many people as, as we can 
and uh, provide whatever help, support that we can provide to them by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, I'm asking you humbly, if you are able to support in a, in a financial donation, whatever the amount is, how big or small, it doesn't matter as long as it comes from the heart. So I'm asking you all, my beloved, if you can support us uh, financially um, to take all that money to those people who are in need of it um, badly, my beloved. So um, this is the website. Um, it is the Good Samaritan Aid Society, or uh, short Jesus, G-S-A-S, G-S-A-S dot org dot A-U. You visit this website, you can donate through the website, whether directly into the bank account or using PayPal. So those, our beloveds who live uh, abroad in other countries outside of Australia, if you wish to donate, you can go to the website and use PayPal to send your donation. May the Lord Jesus bless you. May the Lord Jesus protect you, guide you, reward you abundantly. And if you can't help us financially, definitely, regardless, regardless whether you can or not, but I will definitely ask you to pray for us because prayer is foundational. I need your prayers because prayers can move mountains and do wonders and miracles and bring the impossible into possible. So God willing, we're going um, in August sometime to uh, visit our beloved people in Turkey, Lebanon, and Syria. The Good Samaritan Aid Society, by the grace of God, um, supports a lot of families in other parts of the world and children as well. I remember a few months back, we started with about 10 kids. Now we have over 160 children that we support financially to keep them with their parents, not to be lost to elsewhere. So over 160 children, over 600 or 1,000 families maybe now uh, of in, in about nine different countries. Uh, some of these countries are um, Africa, um, Egypt, uh, Sudan, Iraq, um, and then Turkey, Lebanon, Syria, and other countries doesn't come to mind now, but there's about nine or 10 different countries that we send financial and also f uh, food support uh, to these families and children. Um, may the Lord Jesus bless you. May the Lord Jesus guide you, protect you always, my beloved, and always be close to the church. Always be close to the word of the Lord and to his holy house. It is the ark that delivers you from the great flood of the world. Don't go to the world. The world drowns people. Come to the ark to be delivered. God bless you. Let us pray, peace be with us. The grace of the Holy Spirit be with you, with us, and with all who receive him in the kingdom of heaven forever. Amen. With you, with us, and with all those who receive him in the kingdom of heaven, give glory to the living God. Glory. Glory.